to live the values we espouse. Your participation in work shows us that we must speak up. And most importantly, maybe, to move from the heart, embracing, empowering, uplifting our community, and the multitude of communities within the one. I will be forever grateful for knowing you and working with you. Thank you. Right. So, Michelle Miller joined the council two years ago, and she has been on GOL and the chair of GOL. She was on finance, and probably the thing we will always remember you for is you're chairing AHRA. You came to us chairing that, and you continue to chair it almost to the very end of your term. So to speak to Michelle, I've asked Andy and Alicia to make comments. Which one of you wants to go first? Alicia, you're calling. Um, Andy, why don't you go first? Because I'm pulling Okay. Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you. I pulled the, I, I pulled the path there. <laughs> uh, but in doing so, I, I guess I'm going to start by uh, venturing off topic for just a second and say in the very first council meeting of this council, I recognized the fact that I was in a peculiar position of being the token male. And I recognized also that uh, in reality, uh, in, I think we saw it actually when we were looking at the uh, Kanagasaki uh, council, that um, usually it's the other way around. And uh, I therefore, in recognition of that, said that I was uh, going to be honored to serve with the entire group of this council. And I have absolutely been honored to serve with all of you. Um, but speaking to Michelle, uh, Michelle is an exceptional person, and I really have enjoyed working with you. Um, I first got to know you when I was serving on GOL back in 2020, and you came before GOL because you were presenting um, on behalf of an organization, which I'm uh, never quite sure was more than the two of you who were presenting at the time, <laughs> called Reparations for Amherst, but you were presenting a um, resolution for our consideration and um, it was uh, um, one of the longest worded titles of a resolution that I think I've experienced in all of my years on the council um, and even the select board, a resolution on behalf of reparations for Amherst affirming the town of Amherst commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for black residents. That was a heck of a title, <laughs> but the passion and the experience and the wisdom that you brought to GOL and your willingness to work with us to fashion exact wording that really um, fit the intent of you as a, as a community sponsor and um, also um, address the needs that we had to make sure that it was something that was uh, clear, consistent, and actionable, uh, as you now know what that means. Uh, it uh, was, uh, um, I, I really appreciated it because having a community sponsors with, which really didn't have active um, council sponsors in that one, it was really the community sponsors who were having to carry the show. You did a great uh, job in representing the interest that um, you were presenting. So when um, Sarah Swartz decided not to run for the uh, council as District 1 representative, and then I heard that you had decided to uh, 
declare your candidacy and um, bring yourself to the voters, I was absolutely delighted because I already knew um, a lot about you and about your passion for what you do. And uh, the first committee that you asked to be on was the Finance Committee. <laughs> the Finance Committee, is, uh, as you know, is not simple because we're trying to deal with understanding what the needs and the priorities are in the council's mind for the town and how it expends its resources. But we also have to do so consistent with a lot of demands and a lot of requirements and a lot of barriers, and borders, including uh, the charter, excuse me for that, um, charter and state law. But you really dug in and you were a great member and I was sorry that you decided you didn't want to do two years on the committee, uh, but uh, you had other things in mind and I appreciated that. Um, the other experience that I had working with you quite closely was when the council was all of a sudden confronted with the question of what was the right kind of surface to have on the playing fields that were going with the new track and um, that uh, there was a lot of passion on both sides because we had uh, heard a lot about the need for a playable surface that would uh, be able to serve the largest number of students. And at the same time, um, we wanted to make sure that it was a safe surface. And, uh, you know, as you did with the reparations, uh, you dug in and really came to understand the complexity of both sides. And I remember the morning that you decided uh, to uh, take an early morning tour with uh, the superintendent, the athletic director of all of the play fields and the pros and cons and the needs of each sport. And you called and said, you wanna come with me? And I said, what time are you doing this? And you told me, I said, no, have a good time. Uh, but um, you then crafted um, a resolution to a problem and allowed the council to state its um, concerns and to give guidance back to the school committee and allow us to move forward. And it was your leadership in creating that very difficult resolution that I think really enabled us to get on to where we are now which is a uh, school committee that's still working on the issue. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the, um, and then of course, then there was all of the work that you did with AHRA and the national recognition that you received as a result. And I think that that speaks for itself so clearly that I don't have to bother to spend any more time on that one because um, I think that we all know so having said all of that, um, I'm going to miss you as a fellow counselor tremendously. I look forward to continuing to be your friend living on the northern side of Amherst and uh, um, trying to uh, continue to have that feeling of uh, uh, compassion and support that you offered me and I hope I was able to offer you. So thank you. Thanks. Nice. So Alicia, you get to follow that one. Thank you. Um, I do second everything that Andy just said, but I, I did write something for you, Michelle. Um, and so as we uh, gather for our final council meeting of this term, I stand before you with a bittersweet feeling bidding farewell to a remarkable councilwoman whose dedication and passion have left an undeniable mark on our community. Um, and I know you did not seek a second term, but it is with a mix of gratitude and admiration uh, that I speak of your contributions today. Um, throughout her term, Michelle has exemplified what it means to be a devoted public official. She's approached her role, not just as a council member, but as a compassionate listener who combines heart and wisdom to craft thoughtful and impactful proposals. Her commitment to bettering our town has been unwavering and her advocacy for the community has been nothing short of amazing. I have had the opportunity to work on initiatives one-on-one -on -one with Michelle and I am astounded at her ability to so deeply listen 
and to listen for meaning and understanding and her courage to ask hard but important questions and to identify themes and all in the name of seeking solutions. Um, I want to especially highlight Michelle's exemplary leadership on the African Heritage Reparations Assembly, her dedication to advancing social and reparative justice, fostering healing and creating meaningful dialogue has been truly commendable. Michelle's efforts have not only sparked crucial conversations, but have also paved the way for tangible steps to be taken towards a more inclusive and equitable community. Her presence on this council has been invaluable and she has been a beacon of guidance and insight during challenging council times, consistently advocating for and striving to, be, to build a more just society for all. Uh, Michelle's departure leaves a void, but I'm confident that her impact will endure, endure far beyond her two years of council service. Um, and as Michelle embarks on her next chapter, I have no doubt that her work will continue to positively influence the lives of our town residents and even the decisions that will be made by the next council. We are immensely fortunate to have had the opportunity to benefit from Michelle's leadership and to learn from her wisdom. And I eagerly await witnessing the continued positive impacts of her work. And I extend my heartfelt thanks for her invaluable contributions. Thank you, Michelle, for your dedication, your tireless efforts, and your enduring commitment to making our town a better place for everyone. Your work has helped to lay a foundation for a more equitable and inclusive town, and we are deeply, deeply grateful for your service. Thanks. So now we move on to the senior people who have been on the counselor. Hey, these were on your website. <laughs> no, maybe the one on the right wasn't, but you know. <laughs> um, Shalini Balmilton. Shalini joined the council, the inaugural council, and has brought probably some of the more interesting insight into any number of issues and fighting hard for people who are not initially residents of the United States, which is admirable and wonderful. She served on TSO, CRC, and I think a couple other things. What I'd like to do is ask Mandy Jo Haneke and Kathy Shane to speak to Shalini. Which one? Kathy? No, Mandy Jo is going to go. Um, a lot of this has already been said during the earlier conversation we had on the legislative process guide. But um, what I want to say is, you know, in your five years on the council, you have really brought a focus of values and community outreach, you know, from having us put in a statement of values in the rules of procedure um, to the community stakeholders engagement template. If you remember that one that you brought to CRC that I think Anna already referenced today, um, to your work with UMass that you brought me and Brianna Sunrid into for Community Click and Amherst Talks to find other ways for um, resident engagement and bringing the council to the people, to the community engagement report that you spearheaded and then found an intern to help you with from UMass <laughs> on our engagement um, and the survey for the residential rental bylaw to the latest one of the legislative process guide that came today. Um, I think your legacy at the council will be never forgetting that one of our roles is community outreach. Um, and it's sometimes easy to forget or ignore our need to do that because it is hard and you never let us ignore that. Um, and the mindfulness you bring to the council. I couldn't, I couldn't stop without mentioning that. I think one of the first district council meetings, district five, meetings we I went to um, was at, I, I think it was on Longmeadow Drive. It might've been on Longmeadow with Gazit Kaya and all, um, where you started with a mindfulness start and, and just bringing us all together and reminding us what we're there for and that we should bring, have an open mind and a clear mind and that we're all there for the good of the community. Um, so with that, I'm just going to say we're going to miss you. 
Kathy? So, Mandy and I shared the experience with Shalini on the Rules Committee those many years ago. <laughs> and and it was, she she said, shouldn't we have a value statement? And, and not just shouldn't we have, came with a, a thoughtful list and has brought that up multiple times. And and it's it's been a, a foundation for all of us, and I, I think a very useful one. The other thing that you have done consistently, we saw tonight, is bring ideas or um, bring, I, when I was at CRC this past week, um, you brought um, uh, a look at how other communities had started to bring in inspections with a view toward how the tenants responded and worrying about people who lived in substandard housing. And it was a document that I wouldn't have known existed and bringing it into the conversation brought a depth to a conversation that I think we don't often have. So, so I thank you for that. I knew Shalini before the council <laughs> and one of the other things that she has done that many have experienced is bring um, a love of living in the dance, the dance and ceremony, um, bringing costumes in to not just the council meeting, but realize that color is okay. Although when you look around us tonight, black seems to have been the theme. <laughs> so I, I really thank you for it, Shalini, and for your gift. Um, Mandy mentioned the mindless, mindfulness as a concept, but I went to a district five meeting when we were still meeting in person, and she had this little bell, and you would ring the bell because it was starting with a moment of silence, which um, those who've been to Quaker movements, it's like, just take a moment you know, to regroup before we start. And I think it was just a healthy way to begin a meeting um, and think through. So I thank you very much because it's certainly not a tradition that I grew up with. Thank you. Dorothy, thanks for rejoining us with your vision in front of us. Dorothy, you've been on the council for five years and what a few of you might remember, but not all of you know, Dorothy actually chaired the initial council meeting because she at that point was the oldest member of the council. And according to the charter, that is who chairs the initial council meeting. So um, in addition to that, you worked hard to create CRC. I remember those conversations. You've been on TSO, you've been on finance. I think you've been on them all, but maybe not GOL. So Dorothy, we've asked Jennifer and Pam to speak to you. We all wanna say, we district, the new district four wants to say thank you to Dorothy. Um, at her going away District 3 meeting, um, one of the cards that was attached to a gift was, a, was an acrostic, an acrostic of her name. So D stood for diligent, O for organized, R responsive, O opinionated, TH thoughtful, and Y your counselor. For District 3. And I, as, as a newly merged district, um, look to Dorothy as sort of the consummate spokesperson for her constituents. She has advocated for their needs. She brought attention to the issues that they, that they had. Um, and it was, it was truly in the spirit of what am I, what are, what do these people need? What am I here for? Um, Dorothy definitely brings a forthrightness to everything she does and uh, to the discussions. And, and I always appreciated the fact that she um, got right to the point. I said, Dorothy, how do, you, how do you make these concise points? And she goes, I write them down, three points. Da, da, da. <laughs> That's the point you wanna make. And I said, okay, yeah, we could all learn from you. We could all learn to emulate that. So I want to say personally, thank you to Dorothy for her support and from the rest of 
district the district uh, a thank you for for the support and for helping bring the council to this point. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think of Dorothy as the conscience of the council. She speaks her mind and eloquently so and always remains true to her convictions, which are rooted in fairness, empathy, equity, and social justice. Dorothy cut her teeth in the women's movement and the civil rights movement of the 1960s and 70s, and she really epitomizes to me what's meant by walking the walk. As a town councilor, no one provides constituent services quite like Dorothy. She answers every single email, knows almost every resident in her district by name, advocates for her constituents' issues you know, and concerns, and follows through to make sure every request and concern is addressed. Dorothy is truly beloved and held in the highest esteem by her constituents. She and Bob regularly open their home and beautiful garden for neighborhood brunches, celebrations, and gatherings. I've been copied on many an email that Dorothy's written well past midnight, making she re sure she re responds to her constituents in a timely manner. From her first day on the council, Dorothy was ahead of the curve sounding the alarm for improved sidewalks and roads. Amity Street, a main thoroughfare in her district, has new sidewalks and a flashing traffic light thanks to Dorothy's perseverance. Dorothy successfully advocated for extended hours of supportive services at an, at an affordable housing complex in her district and brought attention to the need for buried line coverage my pet projects, <laughs> thanks to Dorothy, and has been a wonderful um, liaison to the CSSJC. On a personal note, Dorothy has been a mentor and inspiration since I first started down this path two years ago. I cannot imagine um, an Amherst Town Council without her. Thank you, Dorothy, for your five years of dedicated service, guidance, and leadership. I know I will continue to look for you to you for advice and wisdom, but I promise not to text after 10 p.m., <laughs> but if I do, I know you'll immediately reply. Recently, I woke up at two in the morning, glanced at my phone, there was a text had come in a couple of hours earlier from Dorothy, and I responded, you know, thinking she'd see it the next morning. She texted back right away, and I'm embarrassed to say for the next hour, <laughs> we're texting till 3 a.m. Uh, <clears throat> so I think Dorothy's looking forward to retiring, and. <laughs> and putting that behind her. Um, I know your fellow counselors join me in wishing you all the very best in your post-council adventures. There'll be lots more time for baking delectable delights, reading great books, volunteering at the Amherst Women's Club, teaching and mentoring your students at Holyoke Community College, spending time with your children and grandchildren, and all the other many activities and causes in which you're involved. So thank you, Dorothy, for being such a compassionate colleague, gifted leader, and most importantly to me, a cherished friend and confidant. We will miss you. Thanks. So uh, thank you. We're going to take down the slides and um, we do have one more thing we need to do, and that is to go into executive session. And uh, I'm going to make a motion to convene an executive session in accordance with Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Paragraph 21A7, to comply with or act under the authority of any general or spe special law or federal grant in aid requirements to, be to approve the release of the following executive session minutes. Athena, correct me if I'm wrong. December 5th, two sessions, and December 11th, 20, I'm sorry, December 5th, 2022, two sessions, December 11th, 2023, one session. Is that correct? Yes. And the, and the council will not uh, return to open session following this executive session. Is there a second? I'll second, but I do have a question on point of order on that. Yeah. Does the motion... I believe we're aiming to release one of the two December 5th minutes. Does that have to be reflected in this motion? 
Um, so after the council votes in executive session to approve and or release the minutes, mm -hmm. then um, at the next regular council meeting, you'll make an announcement uh, letting the public know which have been approved and released. Oh, I, but I, I am asking that you approve the December 5th, both sets of minutes, the uh, December 11th minutes, and release one set of the December 5th minutes and the December 11th minutes and retain for future release the other set of December 5th minutes. Does that address your concern? It's the motion that we will actually have in the meeting. Yeah, no, it's just this motion says to approve and release the following. It does. Thank which you. And there, I wanted that clarification. And there was a exchange back and forth. Yeah. We we are going to have to change to a different Zoom link. I believe you already sent that to us. Is that correct? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, we need to vote. <laughs> I have a hand up real yes, quick. I do not want to extend this any longer, but I we I don't feel we can leave without thanking you, Lynn. Oh. Maybe somebody already did and I missed it, but I just want you to hear this, that um, your service and your leadership is has been and is extraordinary. Um, I know that, you know, it hasn't always uh, been easy and or felt, you know, great, but we've had quite a journey um, and I've gotten to know you to be a remarkable person um, who I, I really care about and will miss. And so thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Jennifer? No. I was just gonna say, when you were talking about the hours that committee chairs devote, which is in quite a lot, but you are multiple, I don't, but thank you for all the time. It, thank you. Thanks. Um, okay, we're going to the vote. I'm not good at this, so <laughs> let's just move on. Um, I think we're starting with Michelle Miller. Aye. To vote to go into executive session. Seven. Aye. Dorothy Pam? Yes. Pam Rooney? Yes. Kathy Shane? Yes. Andy Steinberg? Yes. Jennifer Taub? Yes. Alicia Walker? Yes. I promise, this is, this is almost over. Shalini Baumilne? Yes. Pat DeAngelis? Aye. Anna Devlin Gothier? Aye. Lynn Griesmers and I, Mandy Johanneke? Aye. Anika Lopes? Aye. It's unanimous. We're going on to a sep we're going off of this link and on to a new link. I do. I got them from Dorothy when I first started on the council. So from members of the public, the council is going into an executive session and will not return to this open session. Good night. <laughs>